Good morning, and welcome to my garden. My name is Scott Coggins. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about my aquaponic systems that I built. I'm going to show each component and describe what, what they do in my system. I'm also going to briefly uh, describe the nitrogen cycle as it applies to the aquaponics system. I'm, we're located in uh, Southern Nevada, Henderson, Nevada, and uh, I'm a third generation out here. I remember my grandparents when I was a kid growing in their backyard uh, in Boulder City. I remember vividly as a kid, my grandmother showed me an eggplant, an old purple brown eggplant. And I could not comprehend what an eggplant was. Eggs come from chickens. Anyways, my dad also had a garden in his house a few miles away from where I live right now. And he grew the best tomatoes that I've ever seen. I still can't replicate his success. I'd like to have some of those seeds today. A little bit about my past is uh, how I got to this point. I was a contractor in 2008 when the economy took a, well, let's say a crap nosedive, however you want to say it. I closed my business in 2009. I went to work for one of my suppliers, a painting supplier. Worked for them for a couple of years. They got bought out by a bigger company. I got laid off and I found myself in the unemployment line, went down to the unemployment office and, and was informed that, uh, based off my military service, that I, my GI Bill has been reactivated. I go back to school. So my wife and I discussed it and I had the, uh, we had the, you know, the funds available for me to take a couple semesters and go get some more education and learn some stuff. So my very first class, Anthropology 101, about two-thirds of the way through, they talked briefly about an aquaponic system. It was in Africa, it was on acre land, had 10,000 people, and it just simply intrigued me. I couldn't believe that something like this existed. Uh, basically, from that day forward, everything I did for my, you know, my few college semesters that I did, if I had to do a report or anything, it was all based on aquaponics. I researched everything. I came home and told my wife that I was going to build an aquaponics system, and that's what I've done. And like I said, we're going to spend a few minutes. I've also got some, you know, I got you know, 13 raised bed gardens on my property too that I've had for years, and I'll, I'll talk about them in another video. Today I just want to show you around my aquaponics system. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to each component, show you what it is, show you how I built it, or describe why I built it or how I built it, and what I believe the function does for me. Uh, and then we're going to go look at some plants and some roots, and then finally I'm just going to spend a few more minutes and talk about you know, some of my thoughts and what I think, uh, you know, why I'm doing what I'm doing, what I think that my end result should be, or, or where I think where I think everything needs to start heading towards. Anyways, we're going to start off at the sump tank. This is where I believe the, uh, the, you know, the aquaponic system starts off. My sump tank has a little 1,200-gallon uh, pump in it, and I'm going to explain it. It's basically temporary at this point, and I'll tell you why I, I, I say that. Anyways, let's head over to the sump tank. All right, so here we are with the sump tank. The purpose of the sump tank it fluctuates while all the other beds stay a constant height. Uh, so we keep the pump in the sump and it pumps it into the fish tank and all those grab a height that is set by design. And this fluctuates up and down. I add water as I need it through evaporation or with the rains, we catch a little bit of rain, it fills it up. The sump that I have in place right now is temporary, at best, uh, but it's been temporary for two years now, so you, everyone describes what temporary is to me, I'm still using it. It will fail, I know that. I'm going to try and do an ICB tank, I don't know if I'm going to bury something bigger down in the back of the yard to hold more water for different systems. I haven't made a final decision on all that yet. Today it's still working, uh, although be it I have to, uh, you know, put some strap around it, since it is just you know, a piece of plywood, three-quarter inch plywood with the coating on there, it holds it up. By the way, this perma-dry will stretch 80 times its width and still hold. Uh, it's really good stuff. I will be putting a link at the bottom on this video of how to get a hold of perma-dry. I had to end, I ordered it through a company in Las Vegas, uh, and they shipped it to them. I couldn't order directly. So you'll have to find a builder supply in your area that can order from Permadry. And I went to their website the other day because I've seen uh, 
you know, on John Kohler's video, Growing Your Greens, there's some people asking questions about where to get the product. Uh, anyways, I'll, I'll put a link to that uh, somewhere in the bottom uh, to show how we get to that. So this pump runs, this, this is the pump that runs the whole system. This is a 12 gallon, 1200 gallon an hour pump, this actual pump on this side. Uh, based off what I've read and what people talk about on, uh, on some uh, health groups is I probably should have a double size pump. Now, I've got, I'm running about 2500 gallons total, uh, 10,000 liters, uh, I'm going to put my notes out for the people who, who work in liters as well. Uh, 10, 1200 gallons an hour and I should be, so t every two hours I cycle all the way through the system, I should be cycling once per hour to get optimal rate. As we can see everything's growing pretty good right now. I don't see a need to go down and spend some more money on another pump when this one's working all right. I do plan on making another system, a flood and drain system. This this pump might end up in there if, if, if the calculations you know, say that I need this type of pump. Uh, other than that, everything seems to be working good. You can see that it drops back in here. It's holding up. Temporary, no temporary is done. I mean, temporary has a life, and we'll see what that is. Hopefully, uh, I'll get to it this spring or, you know. One rainstorm, it could just go away. I, I hope not to have that happen. I will have to fix before then. There's other things on my list as well. Next, we're going to go over to the fish tank. Uh, and I'm going to show you where this pipe drops in and, and how it goes from there. Alright, so let's talk about the nitrogen cycle for a couple of minutes. So we now have the fish to the system. They start producing ammonia. Once you get enough ammonia in the system, a bacteria starts to grow, nitrosinoma. They eat ammonia and they produce a nitrite. Uh, this is a slow growing bacteria as I understand it. It takes uh, about 28 days for it to reproduce at optimal temperatures, about 78 degrees or 76 degrees in the water. I, I can look that up for sure. Uh, once you get enough levels of that bacteria, the nitrosinoma, and if I'm saying it wrong, please correct me. I'm, I'm reading it. I've never heard it, heard it said. I don't talk to a lot of people often find it just in my backyard. Anyways, as soon as we get enough of the nitrosinoma, the nitrobacter starts to grow, and they eat the nitrosinoma, uh, which produces a nitrite, which is not good for the fish. Uh, when the nit there's enough nitrite levels in the system, the nitrobacter uh, starts grow and produce and they start their byproduct as nitrates. The nitrates what the plants looking for to take up for their intake. So through the whole process of the fish producing the ammonia, the biofilters converting it from a nitrite, the ammonia to a nitrite, and then it, once again into a nitrate, then we run it through the roots, uh, the two grow beds, uh, the roots and the plants take up the nitrate which in turn, uh, in theory, gives us a, a fresh and cleaner water back to the sump tank, which we put into the system. Now, this bacteria grows on everything. It grows on inside the fish tanks, inside, but we just start adding the uh, filter systems in there to give us more growth space. I mean, more area for it to attach to. And there's actually more in my filter systems than there is everywhere else. I would assume. I don't know how to check it by any other means. Uh, that's a, you know, that's a quick, easy, maybe easy to understand, maybe hard to understand explanation of the nitrogen cycle, which is very important in the aquaponics system. Actually, it's very important in nature uh, as a whole. Uh, if you plan on doing an aquaponics system, I, I highly suggest that you understand that. Uh, I'm by no means an expert in the whole system. I'm pretty much an expert in what I got going on here, what I built, and like I said, I'm explaining to you how I think I understand it. Um, there's a lot more smarter people out there about aquaponics and what's going on than I am. I'm just a guy trying to do it and tell you guys what I'm doing. So with that being said, uh, we'll talk more about the fish tank that I have here right now and the components I have. The actual components I have in this system is this fish tank, which is about 800 gallons, uh, 3,000 liters. It's four foot by eight foot by about three and a half, you know, 42 inches deep, 44 inches deep, or something I can measure again. Uh, and I have two grow beds. 
One's 36 feet long, 3 feet wide, and the other one's 32 feet, 32 inches wide. Now I'm sure there's an engineer out there who's going to say, oh, I, I see a mistake already. It took me filling it up to figure that part out, that I should have equal grow beds so they fill up and drain at equal rate. I have a bigger grow bed going into a smaller one, which makes my bigger one ride higher than my smaller one. It took a lot of on-the-spot engineering to figure it out, but I end up, everything I'm running right now is an inch and a quarter, but I put a two and a half inch pipe down at the other end of the drain to get more water volume out of the big tank into the smaller tank. Once again, like I said, I'm not an engineer, but I built it to the space was available. I have made it work, so it's just that there's, you know, actually the way I look at things, there's no problems, there's only solutions. Uh, when I see something fail, it actually makes me happy. I, I, I'm done worrying about it. I get to redesign it and check it again. So anyways, in this fish tank right here, we have probably around 50 goldfish, uh, raisins in size. I bought them all at 15 cent feeders from PetSmart a couple years ago, probably, I don't know, an inch and a half, two inches long. And I got a little video I'll show inside, we'll show inside the fish tank of uh, how they are. I've also got some fish from across the street. My neighbor had a pond out in his front yard for years. Uh, and it has some goldfish, probably, they're probably 10 or 12 inches long. They're getting a little bit bigger in size. I believe there's a couple koi in there, but I don't, can't hardly tell the difference. And I did put two pocosimus in there, but they're black, and I haven't seen them since. I did see them swim across the floor drain in there one time, but that's been a while ago. They tell me they get up to two feet long, so I guess when they get up that long, I should see them in there someday. But right now, I don't know if they made it or not. I haven't seen them come through the filter system, but they were pretty small. They were like an inch and a half, maybe two inches when they put them in there about, I don't know, three weeks ago. So, as we were talking about, uh, the system starts at the sump tank. Is I plug in the sump. That's the only electrical in pump that runs the whole thing. I take that back. I got some air pumps too. And then it drops back in here through this hose. I just put this on this like a uh, you know, make a drop, make a little bit of noise in my office. Kind of tone it down to the video. Part. The water fills up to about 40 inches in here and it goes down through a floor, floor drain like you'd have inside your your shower. It's exactly what it is. It's a shower drain. And it comes out through an inch and a half pipe and starts into the filter system. Uh, on a side note, there's a lot of pipe around here. I've only got two glued fittings of the whole system. And that's underneath the, the fish tank, underneath where the floor drain is. I figured if that pipe come out, there'd be no way I could get to it quick without draining all the water out. So those are the only two glued fittings I have in the whole project. Everything else is put together and Sometimes they weep and seep, but for the most part they just, you know, they hold up. I don't, I'm not running pressure, I'm just running flow through it. So, like I said, this is the fish tank, holds the fish and comes out. And we're going to come in and I'm going to start showing you through the bio filters. And I, I have four different filters here. I have one that I, these are all my takes on other people's designs. Uh, I have a swirl filter, which I my design is a swirl filter. I have two bio filters. And then I have what I call a degassing filter, just so that it, just everything settled down, it's clear water that drops back into the fish tank. And we're going to show you what each one of these filters does and how they work. And then we're going to end up going down and showing you the grow beds and see what we're growing. So, well, further ado, let's get over to the filters and see what we got going there. So here's a picture inside the fish tank before we go over to the filters. This should show you some of the fish. The bigger goldfish are part of a system where... Uh, my neighbor had a little pond out front and he got rid of his goldfish. So I ended up being part of the uh, goldfish repository. I need no more goldfish, thank you. Uh, so there's a four inch drain down there. As you can see, let me get this phone out of the sunlight. You can see the four inch drain down there and that's coming through. You see some bubbles on here and I, I'm afraid that the paint, uh, it rained last night and I'm, I believe there's a a phenomenal column with new paint called surfactant leaching. There's a little bit of detergent in the paint. Uh, I was concerned that it might happen and it seems like it has to some effect. The fish don't seem to be affected by it. It doesn't seem to be very much in it right now, but tomorrow I'll be doing a cleaning and I'll do a, because of these bubbles today, I'll probably do a 30% water change. All right, so the pipe you see with the valve right down there is coming out from underneath the fish tank in the floor drain. As you just saw a few seconds ago, I showed you that other floor drains in the bottom of the tank. 
That pipe in turn comes up into this up into this filter. This is my first filter. It's a sw swirl filter. And the job of this filter is to take the heavies out, the poops and the and the food that didn't get eaten, and any leaves or anything that falls inside there. Uh, its job is to you know try and capture as much as the large solids. What you see these other pipes here, just so when I go to clean the filter system, they all just drain back out into my yard. Uh, I'm going to peek in here a little bit, and you can see I have that pipe that comes in through the through the bottom down there, and it comes up, and it's probably up about six inches, a couple 45 degrees under 90. And what I do with that, let me see if I can get this out of the way there. I have that water come into the bottom of the tank, and it swirls it around in here, and then I have it come back up here and out. So, like I said, and I don't know if you can see, there's some solids down there. I just cleaned this a day or so ago. All right, from in there, it comes out the top of this pipe, down into this pipe, into the bottom of this filter. This is my first bio filter. This is just an overflow that I use in case when it gets clogged up. And this filter is just plumb full of these 3M reusable AC filters that I get down from a local home improvement store. And they're just pancaked in there. So what happens is, is this pipe comes up into the bottom of it, comes all the way up to above the filters, and discharges the water down. I also have two small O2 bubbles in there to help oxygenate the, uh, the uh, bacteria in here. So in, in my design here, the water gets forced back all the way down through the filters and back out to the bottom of this can. So the water has to come up, filter all the way down through, uh, starts getting uh, the bacteria to eat the ammonia, produce the nitrites and the nitrates, comes back out this pipe, comes into the bottom of this can here. So my intent, I'm putting more solids at the bottom and trying to, I'm trying to keep as many solids out of my system as possible. And this one here, once again, is just full of these mats as well. Uh, and it comes from the top and goes back through this filter down into uh, this one last filter, uh, the degassing. I call this my version of a degassing thing. Just gives time for everything to settle and some uh, clear water to drop into the to the grow beds. Uh, I saw this online. Everything I do, I've seen online because you know I don't have I haven't visited another one yet. Uh, about using uh, bottle caps. So I read a lot of water bottles and some of these blue ones might be some alcoholic beverage and anyways We use uh, we use those and put them in there and all I do is just use this as one more area to uh, Have bacteria attached to something it gives me more surface area in the water to help convert the uh, ammonia or nitrites into the nitrates once we get to that point, we drop into the fish tank, and I'm just going to do a quick pan, and I'll set the camera back up on a on a pole here, so I can uh, you know show you more things around here. But this is number one grow bed. This, like I said, this one's 36 feet, 33 or 36 inches, three feet wide, and you may be able to see that pipe on the ground back there. But this is the other one. I also like to uh, point out that my garden, I fit to the side of my house, isn't optimal. Uh, I'd like to see a lot more sun. I'm morally on a northerly, southerly uh, plane this way, and the sun has to come over the house, and and I don't get enough sun. I mean, but I can't move it. This is the only spot I have available. For, I built it for where I'm at. As you can see, the plants do are doing pretty good, but you know you could always use more sun. Uh, Alright, so let me get set up and uh, we'll get this back on a pole and we'll start showing you the, so the fun part, the, the plants that we're growing and the root systems and, and I'll be right back. Okay, so now we've come out of the last filter, that's the uh, degassing filter, is my version of the degassing filter we dropped into this grow bed. Uh, this grow bed is 36 feet long, 3 feet wide. This is the one up against my house. Uh, you can see the sun starting to peek over the house now. Uh, we, before we started getting our main sun for the day. Uh, 
I put a lot of thought into a lot of things uh, during the system when I was designing it, like where I was going to put the fish tank, fish tank level, sump tank, uh, where the grow beds were, size and everything. I didn't put a lot of thought into the raft material, which, which is a critical, uh, is a critical thing. See all the bees flying around? This is beautiful, isn't it? I'll explain how come they're here. So anyways, when we first started off and after the, you know, when three years ago when I filled this up full of water and, <laughs> and it didn't leak. Come on, let's be honest. It didn't leak. I've never built anything like it. I was pretty happy with that, so uh, the raft idea, with everything started moving fast, I was, I just wanted to get it going. This is probably in uh, August of that year. So I went down to the local big box store and I bought this. Uh, this type of material, and you can see it's that stuff, it's got a coating on there. And my thought process was, is I'd seen somewhere, heard somewhere, so how the light, light reflects. I do feel like I'm challenged here with the light. I, I only get it through the middle of the day. But my thought process was was to have the underneath of the leaves so you know maybe stop the aphids coming in. Uh, what I didn't realize though, which I will from this day forward, and maybe you won't make the same mistake, it has a plastic coating on there. And it started off in small large sheets. And then it got smaller and smaller and smaller. And then it was in all my filters. That was a critical error. I had to dump all the water out. We had to get all the way back down. We had to drain it all. I threw all the boards away. I scrubbed it out. I vacuumed it out. I rinsed it out. It was a total nightmare. Uh, don't use that stuff. It's not UV protected. That that uh, that plastic coating is going to come off and it's just going to degrade. Uh, we got past that. That didn't last probably four or five, maybe six months. So then I went down to one of our builder supply houses. And I bought this material. This is two inch thick styrofoam. Styrofoam's not a good choice either. This lasted this lasted longer than the devil stuff, but it degraded on top. Uh, it started getting powdery. We didn't eat any of the plants that came out of it. And it holds water, believe it or not. I didn't realize this at the time, but after some research, you know, once it fails, you gotta start looking for your new one. So I tried to figure out why is this hold water. Well, just press beads together, as come to find out, and it, the water gets inside there and it weighs it down, makes it heavier. So I did a little research online, like I do for everything on this project. Uh, and a guy in Hawaii, apparently, I don't know his name, didn't research, I was looking more for the board, but I read about a guy in Hawaii got his uh, aquaponic system certified organic. I'm not so much concerned about it system, I'm not trying to go organic, but he uses the Dow Blue Board. Uh, which you can pick up in a local store. This is extruded styrofoam, so it doesn't beat together. It doesn't soak up water. They don't get heavier what they are. Stuff I got is only an inch thick, uh, tongue and groove, and I painted it with a with an exterior latex paint. And just as a side note, I mentioned earlier in the in the fish tank from the other day, that little clip of the fish tank a couple days ago. Uh, all paint has a detergent in it, a small amount of detergent in it, to allow it to flow through their guns easier. It's normally not an issue. Uh, if I suggest uh, if you're going to paint these, let these dry for a couple weeks to let them set. If they get wet during the curing process, some of that detergent comes out. Uh, I have a feed and that's what's going on. I've got an eye on it. My fish don't seem to be affected by it, but yeah, it's, it's, it is concerning. It's on my radar. There's nothing I can do about it at this point other than pointing it out to you and then maybe somebody can figure out how to get around this in the future and we'll all work as a community. Anyways, we're going to move on from that. I've got an air stone in here to help oxidate the uh, roots. I've only got one in here. I gotta buy four more pumps. Uh, I'm gonna get these purchased uh, in the next couple weeks to get them installed. They have to be in before the heat. Uh, I gotta have more oxygen in the system. The fish are bigger. Everything require more oxygen. And it just needs to have more oxygen. I'm going to put four pumps, hard pipe it. You'll see every four feet. There'll be a video on that. Uh, what I like about, you can see all the bees. I never had all the bees before, but God, we got a lot of them. And I think the reason being is, is these 
these two inch pots now ride, I don't know if you can see that, these two inch pots now ride an inch in the water. Like I said, I use lava rock, and lava rock is porous, and you know, so the, uh, try not to get bit here. Uh, the lava rock uh, is always stays wet, and it gives the bees a place to come and get a drink where they're not going to drown. So that's good for everybody involved. There's quite a few bees though. Uh, all these plants that you're going to show in here, except for the, the cabbage and the uh, Swiss chard and the lettuces, was planted from transplants three weeks ago. Uh, and they're done very well. Alright, so everything was planted three weeks ago, and I'm just going to show you some of the root growth that's happened in the last three weeks and a couple of terms that I, 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 what I, as I see it. These are the new roots that are coming out that have grown since this has been put in the system. You can see they're white and clean. And these are the ones that were in the dirt. Uh, you know, the dirt roots are attached to, to some of the leaves up here, and when they get yellow like this, that's, uh, I call it dirt root. The ones that are the grow in the dirt always get challenged when it gets into the aquaponics system. You got to start getting new roots in uh, for the new leaves to, to take a better hold. Also, you can see in this leaves right here, it's starting to turn yellow in there. Actually, it's starting to turn a little rust color in there too. Chelated iron into the system because when they start turning, that's the only input I have to put in. When I start seeing the yellow on the leaves, it's time for me to add a little bit of iron. It turns the water a little bit red. Uh, doesn't hurt it. Actually, it helps it. The only other eye, uh, product I'm putting in here right now is azomite. Uh, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to pull the uh, phone off the little pole I got it on and I'm going to walk around and show you the other end of the system and we're going to go over what I got growing on, going on in here. All right, here's where I'm going to start off here. This is a kale that we've got. Uh, it's an heirloom kale. Like I said, everything started, this is uh, last week of February, I think the 26th of February. We planted everything around three weeks ago. Uh, we bought it as starts from one of the big box stores. We're growing kale in here. Uh, this is collard greens. Uh, everything is doubled in size. The roots just look phenomenal. Uh, once again, you can see that this root here has that yellow on there. That's going to be what I, my term, I don't know, my term is a... It's a dirt leaf. Uh, was when the that was a leaf that was on the plant when it was in the dirt. But you can look at here and you can see that we're really starting to get some good growth. You can see some pearly white roots down at the bottom. Uh, everything's growing good. Uh, couldn't be happier with the results to this point. I'm really, really happy with the bees that we have here. Uh, we're going to come down here and we got some cabbages growing. So these these cabbages were started. Probably in November, I'm thinking. I found some down one of the big box stores when I was down there. It was a six pack. I put three in the front yard and three in the back. The three in the front yard did very well. We've already eaten them. Uh, the, these are back here. They just started to take off. The water is, let's, let's say, is a lot colder over the winter. Uh, they didn't die. They didn't frost out. We had one freeze and, and we got down to 40 for a few days. Uh, I know for the rest of you in the world, it's pretty mild. I ain't complaining. Uh, we've also got some Swiss chard that we started off here. This has been in the ground, uh, ground it has been in the uh, water since uh, September of last year. It's a very hardy plant in southern Nevada. Uh, I suggest that you at least put some chards into your into your garden. They grow very well. I can't speak highly enough about it. I mean, if you could just look down inside there and just look at, I mean, you could see four or five leaves, brand new leaves starting at a time all the time, coming up through the bottom. The leaves are going to get really big. We're getting real, some really good conditions for them. They have a nice, really good flavor to them. Uh, these two empty panels right here I'm going to put into full lettuce operations. They're going to have 20 in each one. Uh, and speaking about lettuce, here we go. This is, this, I, I, can't, I can't speak highly enough for the lettuce that I have. Uh, these all start from seeds. Uh, I've got a thousand different varieties inside the house that I'd end up with. Uh, this is all quality. Let me see if I can get this one out of here. No, I won't find it. We'll take this one out and see if I can. Look at this lettuce. It's just amazing. So it looks like actually there might be... Looks like there's two plants growing in here in this one container. But look at how tight and compact these are. This just really has a great flavor, and the, and the roots are just, 
It's just, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, these have been here for a season. They've been here probably six or eight weeks now. Uh, we're just coming out of our, our winter right now. Let me see if I can get this guy in there without hurting him too much. Pull the roots down. There we go. All good. Uh, they've been in there for about six weeks, eight weeks maybe. We've got some other ones starting right now. We've also got some, uh, uh, let's just do this instance here. Just show you all the roots. <laughs> that jazz me every time I see it. One of the greatest things about this that's an uh, added benefit, I also have a compost pile on my property. And uh, I've never been able to compost 100%. I compost, if I don't eat the plant, I compost 99.9%. .9%. The only part that I don't compost is the part that's stuck right here in the uh, in the pot. Everything else, the roots get composted, and everything else get composted. So, uh, another added benefit, I guess. We also got some kohlrabi plants here and some uh, Chinese cabbage. And once again, this is another indication of what I'm saying about the dirt leaves, how they just die off and the new leaves come in here and you can just see how they're just really taking off. You can actually see one of the roots right here in the water. All right, so we're to the end of the grow bed and this is a drop inlet. Okay, this is where we drop into the, drop out of this bed through this inch and a quarter pipe. And like I said, I made the two beds the wrong size, not equal size. This other bed over here, this one here is 32 feet long uh, and six inches narrower. Uh, it rides lower because, well, the bigger one the one on the right that gives the house rise higher because it's holding more water. Uh, I, I suggest uh, thinking it through a little bit more when you do that. Equal beds makes equal flow, I'm, I'm sure. Anyways, I got past that challenge. And the water comes up through here. As a side note, we've never done, these are uh, sweet onions. I've never grown an onion in the system. Uh, we bought a whole package of uh, the dried ones you see, the dried root ones. And I put the rest of my onion patch in the front yard and... I put these out here just to see how they were going to do. So, they look like they're kind of challenging me. It looks like they're a little, maybe, I don't know, waterlogged on, on the top. But we'll see what they look like. So, huh, hey, look at that. This is the first time I've peeked underneath here since I put them in there three weeks ago. Look at the root growth growing off of this. Uh, the reason I rose this up is because this is how the water gets in here. It comes up through this pipe and you can see it flowing up. The beds look really nice and clean. But I'm... The exciting part for this part is looking at these roots. Look at, that is just really exciting. This is jasmine to see these roots. So these might actually take off. So the question now, I guess, is, is, is it going to form a bulb on top? The onion? I don't know. We'll see. I've never done it. And I'll film it so you guys can see it too. Uh, we tried to do some green beans in here. Uh, the green beans got soggy and, and died. So, I don't know. We'll have to figure out a different way to get those started. Uh, got some celery We're from seed that we started. I have a little aquaponics, I have a small aquaponics thing that I built out of a wrapping paper container inside the house. It's just a visual to show people. I'll film that and show you what I'm talking about here in the near future. Alright, so now I want to come down here and talk about tomatoes. I'm not growing any tomatoes in the ground this year. I'm going to grow four different varieties and I'm going to see how they do. Uh, I have high hopes that, the, that I made the right decision if I wanted tomatoes at all. So what we have right here, we'll start off right here. This is an early girl. Uh, that's an Aces 55. And the Aces 55, is a, as I understand it, is a tomato that comes from Bakersfield. It's used for Heinz ketchup. Bakersfield has a similar uh, hot, dry climate as ours. So any tomato that has heat in the name... Uh, uh, will do well in southern Nevada. Uh, any small tomato, early girl tomato, Roma tomato, grape tomato, cherry tomato, they do really well, the real small ones. The ones that don't do well are the beefsteak. And well, what, what the hell, if they don't do well, why are you growing one, Scott? Well, the problem I have with beefsteak, you can get a beefsteak, you get one, maybe two tomatoes off if they're so big. Uh, I'm hoping, because they're laying in water, that uh, we're going to get some, uh, we're going to be able to get enough moisture to them so they can grow. So the problem we have with tomatoes in southern Nevada is is they split and the reason they split is is because as I understand is they uh, inconsistent watering uh, the, the tomato 
senses there's not enough water and it sends up to the to the fruit to harden up the skin and then we say oh yeah that's water and then we overwater it and it splits it i'm hoping in my thought process that we should have uh you know, we should have no split tomatoes and we should have some no blossom in rot based off of uh you know they're always in the water there's no dry times at all so but maybe tomatoes don't like wet feet just look at how rich and green that color that tomato is right now i'm pretty excited so once again we're gonna do a root check we haven't uh we haven't checked on these in, uh, since we put them in, so let's take a look. And we're just sticking out the bottom, we'll take a look. Wow, look at that. Man, this is absolutely way impressive. Look at how much of a root is on there. This has to be almost 16 inches of root for this plant. Look at that. Alright, well this is kind of exciting. I didn't expect to see this much root in three weeks. Let's check this one and see what we get. Are you kidding me? Look at the roots that's coming off this. This is three weeks growth in this situ in, in, in the aquaponics system. This is the best growth rate I've seen of anything. Uh, well, maybe I've made a good decision. Maybe my tomatoes are going to turn out pretty good. See, the other two beds I'm coming down here right now. We're going to put some peppers in and uh, I'll, I'll start doing that tomorrow. And right here, last but not least, that we're growing are some Brussels sprouts. Uh, I've already had aphid problems. Maybe somebody can explain how aphids get in here. I mean, they're sitting in water. I don't know. But they're here. I don't see no ants. I got five Brussels sprouts. And this is going to be the last spot that I grow. I won't grow in these two beds because this is the final drain. So I have a little tea drain where it comes up on top. And it drops back in down to my sump tank. starts the whole cycle all over again. Alright, so I've shown you all the components of the system. Uh, we started off this morning, this is taking a little bit longer. I thought I was going to expect to take a full day of work on this, but hey, it's fun. I'm having a good time. Uh, i learned how to be a video guy. I thought that would be uh, I've shown you the, uh, the fish tank that's around the corner. It's underneath my uh, patio cover. And how it comes through the filter system. It comes back down this grow bed. And back up into this, this grow bed and back down and drops into the sump tank. Uh, like I said, this is my third growing season of it. Uh, we're having some results now that we, well, it's what I've always expected, but let's be honest. When I built this and I had a dream of what it was going to look like, this is starting to be what I thought it was going to be like. Uh, it's taken every day of me believing in it, trying to figure out what's going on and and tinkering with it every day. I come out here, if I don't check it 10 times a day, then I've done something wrong for that day. I enjoy this, and I'm having fun with it. Uh, I do have some general concerns about uh, food security and food safety. Uh, I guess that makes it easy for me because I, I can have those concerns and I can do something that I think is fun as, as well. Uh, you know, just some quick notes. It used to be the be top news of when somebody poisoned our food if people were getting sick, it would be, you know, the lead story on the news. But now with maybe a ticker across the bottom of the TV. Or, you know, somebody, you know, gets us sick and they don't have to pay a fine. But we still got to pay our bills to get ourselves better. Uh, I don't know what's right and I don't know what's wrong. But I know that what I'm trying to do for my wife and I and my kids and my friends, uh, I know I have full faith what I'm feeding them. I know there could be some things in here that somebody might say, hey, that's not bad, but it's got to be better than the alternative, what we got going on right now. Um, anyways, that's what I think about it. i really like to hear your comments. Uh, I have a Facebook page called Coggins Garden, and this you found me at Coggins Garden on YouTube. I'd really appreciate it if you, you know, give me a thumbs up or make a comment. Hey, give me a thumbs down. Tell me what you don't like about it. Uh, I'm just trying to be part of the conversation. I'm, I'm not the voice. I just want to talk about it with people and and just show what I'm doing. It's uh, it's who I am. My name is Scott Coggins. This is my garden. Uh, thank you very much for watching my video.